All right, good. So we have a fairly st standard, straightforward opening that we see in almost every single game I go over. But the game that actually transpires is not like every single game we go over. For example, right now we have the low Chinese, or sorry, the mini Chinese Fuseki. So you're probably expecting the game is going to be mostly centered in the upper right hand corner because that's where the framework is being developed. A lot of the game is going to be like, okay, how are we going to reduce this? What are we getting out of reducing this? Did we give away too much? Did we get away not enough? Are there weak groups going to be uh, formed from, you know, dealing with the upper right hand corner, all of that kind of thing. Uh, and that's not actually where the uh, game is focused. White approaches the bottom right hand corner instead. And we see eh, not the most recent Chiseki here, but we see a fairly recent one. And that white or white attaches instead of the Hane. Black backs off just for settling purposes immediately. White says settling's a pretty good idea. I want to do that as well. So we have both players settling. However, instead of the normal variation where we do not jump out, but we play maybe something like this, and then perhaps pincer, or um, something like maybe this, where we just slide into the corner. White decides to jump out first, and now black has to decide what he wants to do. Is he going to fight this, or is he going to be a little bit passive here? Now, naturally, both these players are relatively aggressive, so if you're guessing that uh, he's going to play passively, eh, probably not. Not something good to expect. Uh, black actually extends up, so he's not kept low. See what he can get. Is there another good reason for this? Yes, because he has the approach available in the lower left-hand corner. So if he's getting influence here, that might uh, be pretty good as well. So okay. We see the Hane. Now we're standing up as we expect. Extending up again as we expect. Eclipsing, hopefully, R7. Maybe able to do something with that with the influence of White's gaining. Maybe Black can approach the corner with the influence of Black's gaining. So we see what each of these players is going for. Black turns because the cut is annoying. I mean, if we don't do that, we like play a larger move elsewhere. Then this gets a little bit awkward because there's problems here, right? We could, for example, cut this immediately because we can't really be Atari down without losing all the things. And we don't really want to lose all the things, so we're not going to Atari down. We could connect here or Atari out, but then the middle stones, what was the point of making the framework and or not the framework, but the influence if we're just gonna turn around and watch as half of our wall is destroyed? That really wouldn't make a whole a great deal of sense either. So we're not gonna do that. So not a not a small move by any measure. This is actually a very, very large move to connect. White pincers. He was building up the influence to attack. We're seeing him attack. Everything is pretty straightforward right now. Black says, ha ha, I'm going to poke at you and then attack the pincering stone. White says, if you really want to Atari one stone, have at it. You can Atari through there. I still have the corner, and there's a cut point. Good luck. Black says, you know what, that's a, that's a really good point. I'm just going to sacrifice these stones instead. So you're going to respond here, because otherwise I'm going to connect underneath. And then I'm going to build up. White actually turns, which I think is a little bit odd, but at the same time, not really. Uh, I was not I was not expecting the turn because I know that white can connect underneath, or that black can connect, connect underneath rather, can connect underneath white stones. But playing anything else here is a bit over concentrated. Whereas if we turn, black does go under, we can still develop the left hand side by taking advantage of the fact that we can play something like the small knight 
or well, yeah, even the small knight starts developing a left hand. Uh, move like uh, k6. So I don't know. It's hard to say. Though black says, "Yippee, I'm gonna go back and live here." His response was pretty straightforward. Does black feel bad about the p a? Uh, not really, because there's Aji still, as like we're seeing here. We're gonna over concentrate our opponent or we're going to potentially live here. So, not really. And as we're seeing right now, Black's moves were valid, they were threats. They were threats that unfortunately were not uh, responded to. And now we're seeing the result of that. We got to poke all the things and then connect up. White, on the other hand, just gets to back out. So that felt strange for White. It's like, are you really getting enough here, White? Because, mm, I don't know. I don't know. It looks like that Black's getting the bottom. Looks like Black's developing the right, or at the very least connected over there. What do you think? Is this like really a nice even result for both sides? Do you think White's got more? Do you think Black got more out of the situation? Uh, what are you guys thinking here? What are your opinions? Do we have any opinions? Is this too close to tell? You agree? Okay. Uh, so let's switch tactics then. What do we know? about how White is going to try to play with this game, given uh, the result that he has gone after for himself. What kind of game can we expect White to play from here on out? What is White looking for? Try to use his influence. Yeah, he's going to have to, tra yeah, he traded influence for territory. I mean, basic, basic, basic uh, exchange. Has to do something with this influence. But what is he going to do? Uh, invade the top? Pressure the top? Yeah, could do, could do. You wish KGS had better audio? Yeah, yeah. Me too, me too. Alright, so... Black's first move is to say... I'm not going to let you be... Sur I'm not going to let you surround me. Because that's that'd be huge. Puts a tiny bit of pressure on the group, takes enclosure for himself. Black says, This has no Aji anymore, it's mine. Nom nom. White has to use his influence. White has got to use that influence. So, all right, we're approaching the manner that, unfortunately, Black wants us to. Normally, the attachment here is not the answer. But the Black Stones on the right-hand side are fairly strong. So if White does something insane, like drop down at Q18, for example, that's not going to be in his best interest, because what is he really going to be using that influence for? You're not really doing anything. There's nothing there to really use your influence against, given that Black's pretty strong there. So we honey. We back off. And now we need to try to use all this influence. So he starts by using the stones that are not quite dead yet. That's a good point too. Black's position is fairly low. That is very true. Rip in pieces, tree. Alright, so we've got a little bit of something there. White peeps. Black connects. And now we have a choice. I did. 
I uh, went to college in Canada where we studied lumberjacking all day. It was it was quite useful. Let's see. So now we have a choice is white. We could connect, but that's a bit of a problem. Not making fun of all Canadians, man. They're like the best lumberjacks ever. Okay, they need to be proud of that. We could connect at A. That's a little bit too slow because we don't really know where they're going to go. Uh, we could, I guess, follow up after Black plays B, but uh, uh, pincer. But then we can't treat our stones lightly because we have the three of them there. Um, could pincer the stone, true. Uh, and we can also enclose and hope for the best. But enclosing and hoping for the best is Gote, and then our white. Then we know that our opponent's going to split us, so we can take C off the board. Connecting at A is heavy. We don't like that. We take A off the board, which leaves us with pincering, trying to use what influence we have against these two stones. Black says, you didn't connect. I'm going to cut through you. So we play nice and lightly. White can't, or black can't Hane, because too many cut points, so we have to extend. Now, do you know the proper response here for white? Locally, anyway, locally, with these with these three stones that are on top of the board. Do you know the, do you know the proper response there? M16, swing and a miss. O15 from Dasan. Yes, exactly. Usually we don't like to Atari our stone our opponent. Blah, 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 blah. We don't like to Atari our opponent's stones if it's just gonna make them stronger. Here, on the other hand, we're kind of desperate not to die, so we can break a few rules. Need the forcing move that this actually affords us, because we get this in for free now. They extend. <clears throat> then we get this in for free. One second. Sorry. I've been talking for the last five hours. <clears throat> yes, driving to Suji. So we're getting a nice uh, wall here. Our opponent has to extend yet again. We extend one more time because the Hane is pretty good as well. The Hane would be great. Give us another wall here. With the wall on the bottom, we're starting to bring all this together. So black says, I'm not going to let you do that. And white says, that's fine. I'm going to risk it again because there's still only three liberties. I can Hane essentially the head of two and three stones here because you only have the three liberties. Black says, that's fine. I'm going to Hane. So what does white do? White studies on KGS, and he cuts immediately. So there you go. White now looks like he's starting to take over. It looks like it that way, yeah, doesn't it? It really does. And it's all from this little thing right there. We just needed to provoke a fight. Our opponent gave us something to fight over. Sacrifice a couple of stones to get what we're looking for. As long as we know what we're looking for. We know we're looking for influence because we were developing a lot of influence this far. Uh, this, uh, yeah. Threaten to connect. The Hane, I think at this point, can be regarded maybe as a mistake. Because it looks like black is giving up entirely too much and we don't really know where the gain is just yet. Right? So we need to connect, we need to extend out, because if we... if white takes that point, I think the game ends. It's like, immediately. White plays Hane. Now, the entire left-hand side of the board is under severe attack. Now, the question has to become... What do we do from here? Because this, 
Oh boy, this is a position that none of us really wants to be in as white, or as black, sorry. We don't want to have to uh, give all this away to white. We need to kind of reduce it. Some of our stones have to come back to life. Just need to know what and how and what order. Black's moves coming up are understandable. Black chooses to simplify this because he's a bit of a nine down and usually the stronger you get, oddly enough, the more simplified you try and make the game. That kind of sounds odd because you probably have this idea in the back of your head that things keep getting more complicated, but the complicated bits are actually reading how to make things not complicated, if that makes any sense. So what he does is he notices that there's some issues here with white stones in that they're not quite alive yet. So he turns something that I don't think any player here would be willing to do. It's like, all right, I'm going to risk giving my opponent eight and ninth line territory. The reason I'm doing that is because there's some stones in the center of the board I might be able to attack still. So we're going to turn. And White's like, all right, thanks. Black pushes. And White's like, I, can, I, can I have ninth? Ninth asking for too much. And Black says, yes, ninth is asking for too much. So we get a cut. White descends because we can threaten to capture four stones. So we make ourselves nice and alive. And then White decides not to be greedy. Go back to 7th line, that's respectable as well. No complaining. Over 7th line territory. Seems like a pretty good result for white. Uh, I see what you're trying to do with a move like C10. Um, you don't want to play low, though, because that's like third line. I see you're trying to surround something there, but third line's not quite where you want to do it. Instead, White says, I'm going to play the large knight and try to surround these stones that are now in trouble. Yeah, B, yeah, you're right, you're right. I should point out, especially with either just here or here, there's a very, very large upper right-hand corner, and just upper right-hand side in general for white, or for black, rather. Lee Siddle walked up to look at this board and promptly stated I can kill the upper left as black. I don't think so. It wouldn't surprise me if he said something like that, but I don't think so. All right, so we need to not die with these five stones. So we need a base. White says, I noticed you need a base. How about I remove it? To which Black replied, that's not nice to do. I'm going to try to live here. So now the game has gotten horrifyingly complicated. It was nice and simple for a while. It really, really was. Influence versus territory. Easy exchange. Now a fight broke out, and Black's quickly realizing that if he simply defends locally, 
and allows his opponent to push him around, he's probably in a lot of trouble. So he's trying to counterattack while he's being attacked to see what can what he can do. Opponent does not ignore because this is very, very huge. Hey Dasan, uh when do we cross cut? If you are still there. Uh oh. When we have no idea what to do. Exactly. All we know is we need Aji here because we have to find some livable shape because this area is enormous. So we don't know what else to do. We're going to go ahead and cross cut. White ass to Atari. Atari all the things. Now, because I'm very, very weak, I would have respond here. Maybe with going to Ko, maybe with a connection with anything. I'd be like, okay, it's gonna be Sente and then I'll go off and do something else. But White sees, hey, there's a Ko here. And there's like this group that's weak over here. So let's poke at this and see how many Ko threats we can get. While well, Black's threatening to live on the top of the board. That's an amazing way of simplifying things. It's like Black, on the other hand, is trying to keep it simple. It's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to live. And then we're going to go back and deal with the middle. White's like, I'm going to surround the middle. And then I'm going to go back and deal with the corner. And they're both they're each trying to like stick to what they're doing, which I find amazing. Because I'd be worried that I just, I don't know, got the entire left hand side killed and my six stones over there are dead. So, check for Aji. The Hane ensures not very much Aji. Check for Aji again. Nope, no connection there either. But might be able to live. Could live in the corner maybe. That's good. It's a reduction. But that means we go back to Ko because that doesn't have to be responded to. All right, so now we're in a co. Which we are now making larger. Black's trying to take the all the bottom for himself, but he's in a co, so he might be able to live on top of the board as well. That's pretty greedy. It's like, I'm going to expand my territory while I'm in this co for all of my life on the top of the board. Now me, I obviously lose this because I'm really bad at co. White, on the other hand, is not. So let's see if we can find white's threats. Where does white have threats? Let's try and get better at co right now. Where do we see threats for white? Does white have any threats? If white has no threats, white is in trouble. A2. Uh, A2 is not really a threat because there's going to connect out now. Uh, P10. What is P10? P10. P10. The connection. Um, okay, yeah, the connection along with uh, reviving the cutting stone. I can see that one. K3, K3, K3. Close, very close. That is a threat I'd say, yeah. Mm. N11, that's a threat. That threatens to capture stuff immediately, yeah. So White's first threat is actually to go and play the cut. Because not only is this a cut, this is also threatening to go straight through M3 and kill the N3 stones, right? 
So I liked K3, but N th M3, oh, sorry, M4 is more severe. So all right, we take that. Boom, we got a threat. Who cares about black threats? Black Ataris. That's a local. We know that's there. And then, boom, connect back. All right, or take back, rather. Uh, then we do as mentioned, and we play here, because we can go and cut through and kill all the things. Black goes to see if he can get more uh, liberties. Maybe capture the cutting stones. Backs off, says no, he can't. Forced to go and connect, or cut off. All right. Get the retake. Now, interesting enough, off of that, we have Black Connect. Black might be as bad at co-threats as I am. So we get to make it larger. But we're still in co. Now, where do we have follow-up threats? They have to be large. These have to be threats to, like, kill things. Uh, E3, you can connect. I was wondering about E3 too, uh, Kamiya. But I don't think it kills, right? You have to play E3, then you Hane. B2 is played by black. I don't think we can still kill after that. Uh, O10 too small. O10 not too small at all because you're threatening to revive your stones and kill off something as blacks. Uh, interestingly enough, we don't play O10 in this particular game because white was worried about uh, giving more points to his opponent, so he actually played something a bit simpler that does the exact same thing. He actually played M9. If we get to push with an empty triangle, cut through, those stones are still dead. So connect there. Retake Co. Black says, I, I've got no threats. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to just try to live here. White says, boom, you're dead. And now, I'm going to give a spoiler. Can black be killed? The answer is yes, it can be killed. But can you see how it's killed? So you have to be careful. Little bit of care must be taken. K13 stones not to be underestimated. If we're gonna try to kill, we have to be very, very careful. What do you think is first move for kill? H18, descent. Mmm. H18 is a little bit of a problem. It leaves the Hane, which you can only Hane back to, and then you're threatening to connect up H uh, K13, which is a problem. First move is actually the Hane, because if we first move here, then this gets awkward. You've got to be able to read this out perfect. Right? Because black stones aren't dead in the center, the L L11 ones. Those are completely alive. So we can't let this be taken, at which point we have to go back here and not let this die, but it's too late. It looks like you've already let black live. So the first move is actually this Hane, which is a lot of fun. Black cuts, looking for the odds you were mentioned earlier. 
What do we do from here? Because we can still kill Black. I just spoiled the game for you. But how do we kill Black? How do we kill that little guy? Any idea about next move? No? Oops, my bad. Is the paint legend over there? No, okay. Uh, G18, K16. Uh, K16, unfortunately, I think let's white lit, let's black live. You extend there and then the Atari, and then you're in trouble. Uh, yes, Kamiya, J18 is actually very good. Has to respond. We connect. Black denies us from going underneath. Plays the Atari. The Atari that's we've been looking to get as black the entire game, because this is a forcing move. And now it looks like maybe we're not uh, looking so good here. But this is actually still dead. This is actually still dead. Next move is very important. How is this dead? No monkey jumps. Monkey jumps, not good. How do we kill this? K15? Uh, K15 is an interesting choice. If we do that, we play there. Uh, is it possible to do with K15? Um, goes there. We go there. Uh, I think that lets it live. If you go here, we've got to take this out, right? For second eye. Then we get to play here. I mean, we can falsify this, but only if the upper stones are dead. They're not dead. So this lives now, right? So yeah, I think K15 was wrong. Instead, we turn. And this turn leads into Black playing a time Suji. And then blocking. Now, when we Atari here, Black takes. And when we extend, Black resigns. Because he's capturing a dead group. And there's nothing he can do about it. Capturing a dead group, we can't get the other eye. So, so sorry. It's got too many liberties. Even if we make this shape, it's going to have to be filled. To go back and start taking, we're capturing a useless thing. So, top dies, game over. So... I thought that was a pretty fascinating game. Also, it didn't take very much time to go over, unfortunately. Uh, black or White's been a player that I've ha uh, had my eye on for a very, very long time. One of Korea's better players. And here we can kind of see why. He just, like, killed half the board on uh, against another 9 Don, which is not easy to do have to have amazing life and death and directional skills and be willing to do crazy things 
like uh, take influence apparently that you don't know what you're gonna do with uh, I would have despaired as black after the G12 group died oh uh, G12 G12 oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But, to be fair, if the upper left lives, and we got rid of the lower left-hand corner, black has a large upper right and some bottom territory. So if we're living in the upper left-hand corner, then things aren't so bad. Unfortunately, you know, it looks like this game, he had about as many co-threats as I usually have, so he could not afford uh, the code in order to actually try to live there. I guess he thought he saw something with K18, but just didn't actually turn out to be the case. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate. Uh, were there any other questions about this particular game, though? Because we had... Admittedly, part of the reason why I went over this game is because of Dasan. The, cu the uh, cross-cut in the upper left-hand corner always reminded me of... Uh, Something that he's always saying, as you saw. It's like Black had no idea what to do. He just had—he just knew he didn't want to die right now. Mhm. Mm and he couldn't just take C seventeen. C seventeen. Uh, when would he take C seventeen? Is the question there? I suppose. Well, he did take C17, right? Instead of, of D17. What was D17? Uh, instead of that. Oh, you want him to do the 3-3 three, three instead of that. Uh, um. So, mm, no, definitely not. Definitely not, definitely not, definitely not. Because what you're going to do here is, at best, let's say this is, let's say there's no code. We don't, let's say we don't fight a code here, which you can. Let's say white's just like, okay, I guess you live here. Ah, you got me. So we live there. The right's dead as a result. The, the upper black stones are dead as a result and now you can't let the left die as well which is going to be very difficult to do because you're almost already cut off so do you still have enough points at that point i don't know because he was trying to live at a much larger scale he was trying to get the corner and be out which would have been a great reduction to this area but yeah, it looks like here we're either going to go to co or live and go 10 and we're in trouble regardless. <laughs>